Well, hello and welcome to the house of Valentina. I'm Valentina and today I wanna to chat about trends that will definitely not have a lasting power to them. I work as a designer in the Atlanta area and one of the things that's really important to my job is to make sure that when I'm creating spaces for my clients, whether they're online and for you guys or they are in person here in Atlanta or wherever our travels take us, it is really important that I recommend and install things for my clients that have a lasting power. So when I start to see things pop up in the stores, you guys no, we just went shopping at CB2. CB2 is one of the, oh, it's like such a great source for finding contemporary pieces, things that are really on trend, but it's my job as a designer to really sort through those things and figure out which of those things my clients and you guys are gonna still want five months from now, five years from now, maybe even 50 years from now. So I wanna to talk today about trends that I think they don't have lasting power. They're really popular right now, and they're ones that I think that you might be tempted by. I'm tempted by them for sure, but you may wanna think twice about investing in them. And I'm gonna to talk to you about how to know when to invest in something and when not to as well, not just what's trending, but all those kinds of little things. I apologize for my voice. We had a good old time down in Disney, screaming and hooping and hollering. <laughs> and uh, yeah, kind of ruined my voice, but we had a good old time, it was totally worth it. <laughs> we hope you'll hit subscribe and stick around for a while and give the video a big thumbs up because we hope that you love this as much as we do. Let's jump in. Okay, so the number one thing that I found myself really drawn to in CB2 was a lot of 70s pieces. They have the Frattini something or other collection that's just coming from Milan. They've got a lot of 70s shapes in the furnishings and in the accessories. And I, for one, kept saying things like, this isn't something that I would have picked, but now that I'm here, I really like it. And so those are things that are little clues to me because as a designer, I'm gonna see a lot of things that I really like, but my job is to sort through the emotions of it and figure out does it have lasting quality? Maybe if I'm shopping for my own house or if I'm shopping for my clients. So I really love those 70s pieces. I really love them. I think they're amazing. And with certain clients, I would 100% use that 70s style because it just goes with their wardrobe, it goes with them, it goes with their lifestyle. It's just it's certain people, I think, will always just revert back to a slightly 70s style. It's just gonna always be them. Just like with the mid-century pieces that we've already seen have started to go out of style, certain people will always have those mid-century pieces in their house. I don't think that on the mass market that 70s style is gonna have the lasting quality that I'm really looking for when I'm going to put things into my own home or into my clients' homes. Now, that being said, I do think that you can take those styles and look for pieces that maybe aren't quite so 70s feeling. Maybe something that has a little bit more of a 70s kind of inspiration, if you will. So I think that some of their sofas, um, and I think like 60s and 70s, we start to kind of have this little segue, right? Like I've got the mushroom limestone lamp that I really love, and that kind of went through that little time period. So don't get too caught up and what really qualifies as 60s or 70s or 80s. You're gonna see a lot of 80s right now in style. I really, really love it. I get so excited about it, but I don't end up buying a lot of it. And that's because I have learned to ask myself, is this something that I will want five days from now, five months from now, five years from now, and 50 years from now? And if I can check a couple of those off, I'll probably get something. And if I'm like, Mm, not so sure about at least two of those. I'm gonna start asking myself if it's something that I really want to invest in. So that's just a little hack. Dry flowers, to me, are a really good solution. They really are. And I feel like we just, we just hate it on the faux flower and the faux tree and the faux greens for so long. We were, you know, it's like everybody's taking off their bras and throwing out their ficus trees. <laughs> It's just what everybody was doing, right? We're getting rid of all of the faux plants. Everybody just mass, just boom. I mean, poor uh, thrift stores. I mean, they're just 
flooded right now with faux flowers that nobody wants anymore, right? They get dusty, they fade, they're just not that pretty. They don't really look real. Yeah, lots of reasons why we got rid of dry of faux flowers and then moved on to dried flowers. I don't hate dried flowers. There are some dried flowers that I think look great. I have hydrangeas sitting right behind the camera right now drying on my table and I think that they, I cut them from the garden, I sell them up from my Instagram and I let them dry. So I'm not opposed to all dried flowers, but dried flowers have been like really, really big. And a lot of people put the word, the one word attached to them that makes everybody run out and go and get them, French. <laughs> Oh, all French girls have a dried bouquet of flowers in there. I don't know, it's just a thing. Dried flowers became a thing. And so we've seen a lot of pompous grasses, we've seen a lot of dried flowers, so a lot of faux flowers still floating out there. But I think that dried flowers, even though they do have a lasting quality to them, I don't think that look is very lasting. I just don't think it's, I don't think it's gonna be one of those things that we're gonna want five years from now. And so I think you have to kind of look at that one and say, uh, if I still want it five months from now, is that enough for me? Because some of the dried flowers, I mean, if you're getting them from your garden, then of course, just go get some dried flowers, like get some flowers, dry them out, keep them for a while. And then I usually end up, you know, letting them go back into nature <laughs> at some point. And we're not going to do all dried flowers. First of all, I think, of course, clipping from your garden, having fresh, is amazing. If you don't have a garden or a yard to clip from, you guys know I clip from bushes and all kinds of things. I think also looking at the grocery store, go to the local grocery store and just buy greens. Don't even buy flowers, just buy greens. I think greens always look good in a vase. They last a lot longer than flowers typically. Um, I think it's a great solution. I also have a few faux greens that I have found that look great in vases. I usually buy those on Amazon, but Sometimes the ones that they do have at places like Pottery Barn and CB2 and Crate and Barrel as well, they usually have some good options that have a little bit more lasting quality to them and they look a little bit more alive than those that dried flower trend that I just think just isn't, I don't know. It's just, maybe it's just not for me. You guys let me know down in the, in the comments what you guys think. I usually have my husband do these videos with me because then I can like tag team and be like, let him deliver the bad news, okay? <laughs> But today, I have to go here, okay? And I literally just got rid of my Ikea cabinets that had that sort of high gloss, kind of lacquered, the press wood furniture, yes. See, you guys know, if you are my subscribers, you guys know, I know you're out there, so stick up for me in the comment section, okay? You guys know I love Ikea. I'm one of those crazy designers that just loves Ikea. I know. I'm a total weirdo, I'm a unicorn. <laughs> I just love Ikea. I just think it's so much fun to go there. But the pieces that for me that I have just gotten aware I do not buy, I don't put them into my clients' homes, I don't put them in my home, I just kind of gotten to where I kind of hate them. And that is like the really high lacquered, high gloss pieces, especially when they're the press wood. I've noticed that a lot of stores have stopped selling those pieces as well. The person's desk, that was really popular for a really long time at stores like West Elm. I think even CB2 may even still sell it. I just don't find myself gravitating towards a really high gloss finish, unless it's like a really rich finish, like a really rich wood or a really, oh my gosh, the bone table. If you guys didn't watch my last video, I'm gonna leak it at the end, okay? I'm gonna leak it at the end so you don't have to go watch it now. I'm gonna leak it right at the end. If you haven't watched the CB2 video, you need to because I'm showing you all of the things that I'm talking about. I think almost all of them are in that video. Um, but we were looking at a bone table. Beautiful, beautiful, high gloss, high finish, that looked amazing. But what we're talking about is like the coffee table that's like a high gloss finish that is like, I don't like high gloss finishes on marble or uh, concrete. I don't like it on that press wood. What I've f figured out for myself 
over the years, this is all part of the learning experience, right? Of building out a home, is that those pieces just end up feeling very cold. And that has bothered me for years about the Ikea cabinets that are sitting in here. The Ikea cabinets are great. We didn't throw them out. We're just gonna use them down in the basement for storage. But for me, having the warm wood in the space has just changed everything. So you can still shop at Ikea. So don't worry, we are not dissing Ikea. But Ikea is starting to get really good about coming out with other materials materials and things in wood that you can stain yourself, whether it's a cabinet or it's a coffee table or a side table. There's a lot of other options, but that other stuff just, it just never seems to last that long. Okay, so I feel like this is one that we have talked about before and it's one that I experienced in my own home. So you're gonna see so much of this is right from what we learn from ourselves. When I first moved into my house and I first renovated my kitchen, one of the things that I couldn't wait to put up was my open shelving. <laughs> I couldn't wait to put in open shelving. Quite frankly, I I'm open shelving throughout the house, in the living room, in a bedroom, in a bathroom, open shelving. Like I was into it everywhere for years. I think a lot of us think of the kitchen in particular, but I just think that it just started to annoy me. It was too much to look at and I just got tired of looking at so much stuff. So I don't think open shelving is completely gone. I mean, that would be crazy, right? Like, <laughs> that's like saying couches are going. Like, no, of course not. We'll still have open shelving. But I've gotten to where I typically don't put it into other people's homes and I'm, I've stopped putting it into my own because I don't like having to dust everything I, unless you're gonna literally pull from it every single day which is not the case if you have a lot of open shelving. You're probably not grabbing everything on the open shelf. So I just, I've gotten to where I'm like, no, I just, I don't like looking at all of it. It's too much clutter. It gets dusty. It starts to annoy me and yeah, no, let's just not do open shelving really so much anymore. I like it when it's like towels in a bathroom. I really do like that look like underneath the cabinet. That's really pretty too. I just think that if you're really thinking about putting in open shelving, you might wanna think long and hard about it. If you already have open shelving, you don't have to close it in, like it's fine. But if you're getting ready to invest in something big, like I did, I bought these cabinets. It took me six years to save for them. I wanted to make sure I bought something that I would want forever. <laughs> so I went with closed shelves. In the kitchen, I took down the open cabinets and I put a nice big piece of artwork up instead. If I do open shelving, the one way I really, really like it, maybe in the bathroom for towels, because you're using them all the time, and so there's not a lot of buildup of dust, and there's not a lot of clutter, especially if you fold your towels like hotel style, which is how I like them. But in the kitchen, I do still really like to have one open shelf. We just did it in our Otis building project, and I love that one. It's almost, it's not really a shelf. It's more of a ledge. I feel like the ledge is a little bit different because you're only gonna put things there that you're gonna touch all the time. And maybe a decor piece or two, but really, that's really meant for you to put your little salt cellar there, to have a little pot of herbs that you're gonna pinch off of. That is the way that I would be doing it. And yeah, I am doing it in projects that I'm still working on right now. I am gonna say that crazy sofas are they just don't have lasting quality to them. And so I, as a designer, it's just so hard for me when I see something like really, really trending and I just, I wanna be like the cool kid in town and just run out and buy all the cool kid stuff and crazy sofas. I mean, when we're talking about crazy sofas, we're talking about mega swirls. Uh, I love, oh my gosh, some of these from the 70s, especially that have that little uh, channeling in them. Oh my gosh, some of them are so beautiful. And I follow a lot of Scandinavian design and Scandinavians are kind of notorious. They really love to change things up and they're always looking for like that next big thing, at least on like, there's like a certain level, okay? There's lots of different, that's, I'm making generalizations. All my skinny friends are gonna be <laughs> writing me down in the comments. We do not do that. <laughs> I just think of like the high design and it's almost like high fashion for home and they do change things up a lot. And so a lot of those sofas have been really popular and it's more of like a high fashion kind of feel. And I think they're beautiful. 
If somebody gave one to me, I would keep it and I would love it and I would take such good care of it. But when it comes time to actually buy a sofa for myself and for my clients, I don't typically recommend something that's that trendy. I don't do the crazy sofa thing. I just don't do it because I wanna make sure that I am recommending to you and to my clients and to myself something that I'm gonna want for at least five years. At least five. <laughs> 10 would be great, <laughs> but at least five. At least five. So I think some of those are just a little too trendy. I know myself, I would get tired of them. That's why I think that's not a very lasting thing. But if you have money and you wanna try it out, I just wanna high fashion, like those people donate that stuff, they sell it on to someone else. It's not like it goes to waste. So if you wanna try something crazy, go crazy. And then when you get tired of it, sell it and get something different. Oh man, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I'm just gonna go for it. I don't think that cottage core has a lasting quality to it. <gasps> okay, there, I said it, I said it, I said it. It's done, it's out there, it's into the universe. There you go. I don't think cottage core has lasting quality. It, when I looked it up on Instagram, if you go look up the hashtag, uh, it has 4 million posts tagged with cottage core. And that's just one tag. Okay, 4 million. That's a lot. That is a whole lot. Now, when you go over to French country, it's got 487,000 uh, coastal grandmother. These are all kind of in this sort of vein of this cottagey thing, right? We went through the pandemic. It sucked. I think we can all agree on that. Um, and a lot of people really were looking for cozy vibes to help them feel warm and cocooned and snuggled. And they went back to things that made them feel really comfortable and at ease. And grandma's style is one of those things. I feel like whatever makes you feel good is what you need to be doing as long as it doesn't hurt another human being, right? So, especially when it comes to the design of your home. Okay, so I'm just gonna add that little disclaimer. Um, so not too much hate down in the comments about that. But I think that we need to do what makes us feel good. And if all the cottage core styling, fairies and flowers and more fairies and more flowers and this whole idea of just layering and layering and layering and layering and layering and layering of things that are kind of frou-frou-y. I'm using my dad's word. <laughs> That's what he always called mom's frou-frou. <laughs> I think if that makes you feel good, you should do it. And don't worry about whether it's gonna be here today and gone tomorrow because if it's what you love, you're probably gonna still like it five years from now. There is always going to be a trend in which people love some sort of cottagey style. That style is eternal. But I'm talking about cottage core, which is like hardcore layers with nothing modern and it's really themey and it's just all in. I just feel like that just kind of, that's just gonna kind of go out of style. And if you like that style, and. I think like French country, you still see some of that in my own home. I still have this cabinet back here. that has a French country kind of feel to it. I still have it in my bathroom. I still love French things. I love the French countryside, but I find myself getting to where I don't want it on everything. I didn't want a themed space, which is when I first started doing this home, I was like, oh, I'm gonna go all in. And I just think it's too much. I think it's too much when you try to take one style just and just have it puked all over your house. I think it's better instead to take pieces from it and bring it into a little bit more of a modern setting. That's the way I like to do it. You can take my advice or you can leave it, but I think blending it in with styles and balancing it out with something that's clean lined, you know, I, I just feel like if it's gonna be floral, balance it with a straight line. If it's gonna be super scrolly, have it sitting with something that's really minimal. That's just how I like to do the mix. And I feel like the mix, that has more lasting quality than just every single thing in the entire space being in this one little, you know, florally, scrolly, really busy, lots of layering, maximal kind of style. That's just my opinion though. Okay, let's wrap up really quickly with one that you guys are gonna kind of be like, oh, wait a second. You told us this was gonna be the style and I'm like, I did. I did tell you that this was gonna be really, really, really in. So again, as a designer, my job is to be aware of what's going on. I can't have my head, you know, stuck down in the ground, <laughs> all in the ground. I have to know what's happening in the world. 
But you know, we all know the pandemic happened. And so there was like a trajectory of style that was happening right before then. And that was the beige on beige tread. And so my job as a designer is to say, mm, beige on beige, it's trending. It's trending, it's gonna be huge. It's gonna be everywhere. You're gonna probably want it. But when it came down to, to time to do it in my own house, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't go for, my closet is probably the closest that I did to this style and I love my closet. But my closet also has black in there, it has white in there, it has browns and a little bit of pink, <laughs> a little bit of blue. <laughs> bit of green, but I do actually have more than just beige in there. I do actually have other colors and, and contrast in there. What I'm talking about is beige on beige, beige toned woods, beige rugs, beige walls, beige sofa, beige everything. I think that that style, that I'm seeing it still, but I am seeing that it's really fading out. And it's not, it's not the yellow beiges of the 90s because I know everybody always freaks out, but it is more of a brown undertone beige. And I do like the color because I did it in my own house. I really think it's beautiful. And I love adding beige. Like I've got beige everywhere now. I love beige. I know a lot of people just like hate it. I like that more of like a taupe beige where it's got a little bit more brown in it, like that blanket. I love beige, I think it's beautiful. And we can really layer that into a contemporary home, a modern home, a cottagecore home, any home, any style home. You can use the color beige, but I think it's when it's like all beige, that it's just, it feels, feels sick to me, it feels kind of, I don't know, just kind of beige. <laughs> Yeah, nobody wants that. Nobody wants that, right? We don't want to look beige. Like telling, telling someone that they look beige or they look gray, like those aren't, those aren't compliments. <laughs> They're not meant to be compliments at least. And so I think it's really important to think through, okay, I get that that is super in style and I'm seeing it everywhere, but I really like contrast. I like to add contrast. I mean, clearly I like to do contrast. What do you like? Do you like to have more contrast? Do you like to have levels and layers of neutrals. Maybe you need a white sofa <laughs> and beige walls or maybe white walls and a, and a beige sofa with some beige cushions, but then you add a, a pattern onto it or something that just breaks it up. You can go in a light neutral palette. Um, you don't have to have the black in there. Uh, eventually I'll have somebody that wants to do that too and, and I'm, I'll, I'll do that for them. I, I love that. I love that style. But I think a little bit of contrast and a little bit of differentiation in the color is will, will really help you to have a lasting quality to your home. I just hate for people to go out and buy a beige sofa and then paint the walls beige. At least you can change the walls, but the sofa, and then if you did like a beige tone kind of floor that's kind of blonde, it looks, your eye sees beige, or you did a beige tile, like those start to be very expensive things to fix. So that's why I think you have to really think these things through before you jump into them. Figure out what you like. Use these videos as learning tools. Ask yourself, do I love it? Do I hate it? Write it down in the comments. Get a little bit of a commitment onto it. Write it down in the comments. Go through each one of them. You can do that down in the comment section and write them out. I think it's helpful for you. I think it's helpful for other people to read and see this is why you like it and you don't. And they can, it's a conversation, right? Instead of just being like, this is a style and this is what you're supposed to be doing. I just don't like to do that. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. I hope you had a great time. Please make sure you hit subscribe and give the video a big thumbs up. We've got more makeovers coming out very soon, more trend videos and shopping and all kinds of stuff. You guys know we just, we just love what we do and we love getting to share it with you and to get to be a part of your homes. It is the best thing in the whole wide world. So thank you so much. Cheers. And don't forget, I'm gonna give you a video to watch. I want you to make sure that you check out that CB2 shopping video and I'll also give you a second suggestion as well. And then look down below if you wanna check out any of the links that I've shown in the video or any of the pictures. I've always got that linked up down below. Cheers, you guys. I'll see you in the next one.